OK, hi. Uh, my name is John Huang, and I work on the object detection team at Google. Our paper, Speed Accuracy Tradeoffs uh, for Modern Convolutional Object Detectors, is written for practitioners who would like to deploy object detection in a real application. Uh, you know, as a community, we often tend to care more about models that push the envelope on accuracy. Uh, which model did best on ImageNet? Which model did best on Coco? Uh, but speed is just as important. And we have product teams that would like to deploy an object detector. Uh, you know, we have teams like Street View that want high recall, high precision, but they can afford to use powerful machines running large uh, batch jobs periodically. Uh, on the other hand, we have some teams like Nest who absolutely require on-device inference. But they're willing to sacrifice a little bit in accuracy. And uh, you know, what's difficult for these teams is that there are a ton of detection papers out there, uh, each of which claims to be state of the art, uh, very few of which benchmark against the other methods in a, in a totally fair way. Uh, so we wrote our paper to be a guide to these teams to choose a detection model best for their application. Uh, to create this guide, we wanted to compare a large number of detection models against each other. And what's really made this possible in recent years is that a lot of these architectures have converged uh, on very similar things. And so we've identified three meta architectures, SSD, FASTRCNN, and RFCN. Uh, and this isn't an exhaustive list, but you'll be surprised to find out that most papers out there uh, right now fall under one of these three buckets. Uh, possibly with a different choice of feature extractor, possibly with a different choice of loss function. We al also allow for these feature extractors to be swapped in and out. Uh, for this, we offer a few options, ranging from the newly introduced mobile nets from Andrew Howard uh, et al. to standards such as VGG, ResNet, uh, Inception, and Inception ResNet. Next, we evaluated each of our model combinations on 150, uh, sorry, 150 different model combinations on, along two axes. Uh, performance is measured by mean AP on Coco, that's the y-axis, and uh, speed of running a single image through the network, uh, x-axis. Okay? Um, in particular, we've identified a frontier of optimal models in some sense. So models inside this hull, uh, you might not want to use it for, at least for Coco, uh, just because there's always one that's faster and more accurate. Models on the frontier we really like. And they range from the lightweight uh, mobile net models that you can run on device, on your mobile device, uh, to the you know, much heavier but super accurate faster RCNN with inception ResNet models. We've learned a lot from just staring at this data. And uh, you'll just have to come to the poster to learn more. Uh, what's even more important is that we've made this uh, code publicly available. So now if you go to TensorFlow slash models on GitHub, you can check out the code base. It's the same one we use internally. Uh, and we've deployed it to a number of products, including Street View, Image Search, and uh, Nestcam. It comes with the models on that frontier of optimality that I just showed you. Uh, and if you have your own data sets, you can fine tune one of our models on that data set. If you don't have GPUs, don't worry. We've got you covered. Uh, you, we've made it really easy to launch jobs on Google Cloud. Having this flexible and modular code base has made it really easy for us to iterate and experiment with models. So just an example, uh, we did a push late last year to achieve state of the art on Coco. And so here you can see over a quick uh, two to three week span, we were able to go from a pretty weak model on Coco to, to quite strong performance. Uh, and if you want to hear more about the details of uh, you know, this adventure, come see our poster. Uh, but in short, we won Coco. <laughs>